Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. God our Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are grateful to you this morning. Thank you for the peaceful night rest and for another opportunity to be part of today. We pray, O oh God, that as we look into your word and meditate upon it, may your spirit guide us, grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. For we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today is Tuesday, April 30th, 2019, and we're taking our reading from the first Corinthians chapter 15, 35 to 49. And it says, But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plan the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives it its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh. Animals have another, birds have another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ from a uh, star in splendor. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, and it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, that is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, and the second man is of heaven, as was the earthly man. So are those who are of the earth, and is in the heavenly man. So also are those who are heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so we bear the image of the heavenly man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The topic this morning is caring for your soul. And it's important that before I read the commentary, to try to look at what soul is. Because soul happens to be one of those controversial issues that people are struggling with. In a nutshell, soul is the immaterial part of a human being or the spiritual part of a person. And if we can trace it etymologically, in Greek, the word for soul is psyche, from which we get the word psychology. Now, let's look at the commentary. In furtherance of the discussion on the issue of resurrection, Paul made the very important point that resurrection does not entail the reconstruction of our earthly bodies. In other words, 
when we are buried in the ground, our earthly bodies will decay. Only the soul is indestructible. The soul is what will appear before God on the judgment day in a new body. It is good to take care of our physical bodies, but more important um, to take care of the soul. Unfortunately, many of us can do anything to decorate, feed, and nurture our physical bodies, yet pay little or no attention to our soul. Uh, looking at this line of thought, I would love to ask, how do you take care of yourself? And I'm sure that on a daily basis, you eat three square meal every day. You run a couple of miles to keep your heart in shape. You do a lot of other things to ensure that your body is okay. You get uh, seven hours of sleep or even more. Maybe you do all of those things to take care of your body, which is very, very important. In fact, some people have expensive deodorant and all manner of things just because they want to take care of their body. But the question is, how do you take care of your soul? Do we really pay attention to our soul? And I think that is why the daily devotion this morning is very important caring for your soul because a lot of times we don't pay attention to our souls um, maybe you don't even think about that part of you which is the soul our body demands attention there are certain things you don't do to your body and your body will demand attention but the soul keeps quiet the soul don't always demand as the body does. It doesn't scream in pain or announce a problem. We may neglect the soul for a long time before it demands attention. And that is why this morning, there is an opportunity for, for every child of God to pay close attention to his soul. And just as the topic says, caring for your soul. Meaning it is important that every child of God should take a close look at himself and then the soul as well. Because after this life, the only thing that is going to appear before God, before the judgment throne, is your soul. And that suggests to us that in fact, the soul should be taken more care of than the body. So, uh, then the question comes, why should you care for your soul? And I think that I have a few reasons here why every child of God should take care of his soul. Number one, your soul is the most important part of you. Your soul is the most important part of you. A man called John Akbar, the author of Soul Keeping Rights, the soul is the coolest, peculiar, most mysterious, evocative, secret, eternal, life-directing, fragile, indestructible, controversial, expensive dimension of your existence. Jesus pointed out to his disciples that the soul is important when he said, What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or, what can anyone give in exchange of their soul? And that quotation is from Matthew 16, 26. Nothing in the world is more important than your soul. 
Yet how often we neglect this crucial part of us. And that is why we are reminded this morning to pay close attention to our souls. And number two reason, your soul is the part of you that is eternal. A good haircut lasts about a month. A fashionable new outfit stays stylishly for about a year. But your soul lasts forever. As a matter of fact, every other thing we see around us on earth today is, is, is just for a while. It's temporal. But our soul lasts forever. God created this part of us or oh, you to be with him now and in heaven. Caring for your soul will reap eternal benefit. That is number two reason why you should care for your soul. And number three, the state of your soul affects the rays of your life. My soul may not announce it needs or it needs care. But when it's tired, I, f I feel pulled apart, or we feel pulled apart, we may be able to paste a smile on our faces, but inside of us, we're dying. We may be able to carry a conversation, but we are not really listening. We may go to church and mumble through the songs, but our heart is far from worship. Life loses joy. I mean it when our soul is worn out. We are not able to live life well. So there is need for us to pay attention. And finally, on the need why we need to care for our souls. A healthy soul will enable you to love and serve the people in your life. When our souls are weak, we crave attention. We may become self-centered even self-obsessed. But when we spend time with the Savior and allow Him to fill our souls with His love, we are then able to look beyond our own needs and care for others. So there is need for every child of God to pay close attention to his soul. So this morning as you go out to do other things, as you spend money for other things, remember to pay close attention to your soul. Hence the need to always make yourself available, attend programs in church, read your Bible, be prayerful, and nourish your soul. And you remember the great commandment where he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Until you love God with all your soul, you are not yet there. So when you love him with your mind, with your heart, there is also need for you to love him with your soul. So there is need for every one of us today to care for our soul. And we continue with a commentary. When last did you really spend good time to feed your soul on the word of God and prayer? That is the question we're expected to answer this morning. When last did you really allow God to walk in your life and bring the much needed transformation? Paul is saying here that as far as eternity is concerned, our earthly bodies, no matter how beautiful they currently look, have no place in heaven. This body we are carrying presently have no place in heaven. God will clothe the soul with a new body that is suitable to that heavenly environment. Knowing this, we must give our soul over to God that he may feed and nurture it and clothe us in the end for eternity with him. And this is very, very important. As I conclude, don't neglect your soul. Care for it by spending time with the one who loves you. Sit in silence 
Read God's word. Listen to his voice. Ask him to care for the most important, most fragile, and most indestructible part of you. Viewers, brothers and sisters, as we step out today, remember the need to care for your soul. The importance of this topic cannot be overemphasized. And no wonder the Bible reminded us in Matthew 16 verse 26 that you cannot exchange your soul for anything in the world. But unfortunately, we live at a time where people are exchanging their souls on a daily basis because they want to make it, because they need wealth, because they want to live in, in, in influence and affluence of life. But we are reminded this morning that nothing, there is nothing you can exchange with your soul. And there is need to care for it. And how do you care for it? Read your Bible, attend fellowship, pray very well all the time. And, and above all, and actually it happens to be the first thing to do, you must give your soul over to the Lord Jesus. You have to accept him. And that is the only way that uh, you can care for your soul. I pray this morning that God will help us as you step out, the Lord will guide you. The Lord will bless your going out and coming in. And today shall be unto you a day of testimony. That which you've been trusting God for, the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. Let us pray. Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help us from now on to dedicate our souls and body to you in preparation for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.